Hello and welcome. Today I got this rare PCI graphics card and it seems to be completely dead. Why is it interesting, you may ask? Well, there is not really much to say. The ATI Mark 64 chip is nothing special. Not fast, not slow. The DOS compatibility is average at best. The only unusual thing is that this particular model still uses 16 128K DIP DRAM ICs, which were common for ISA and early VLB graphics cards, but are very unusual for PCI. But the benefits and disadvantages of this graphics card is not what I would like to talk about today. I'm just using the chance to show you one of the very common issues with the old hardware and how to solve it. Quite often, old hardware is simply thrown into a box stacked to a huge pile of scrap. The weight of the parts is substantial and it is resulting in a huge pressure on the PCBs, which are lying below. Such forces applied over a longer period can bend the PCBs and even break them. Take a look again at our graphics card. It is totally bent. Such bending results in a lot of tension on the solder joints, which can break them eventually. So the first hint for the broken solder joints is a bent PCB. However, it also can happen due to another reasons as well, for example through drastic heating up and cooling down the hardware, for example. Anyway, broken solder joints is what I would like to talk about today. We have a badly bent graphics card, which could be dead due to broken solder joints. Especially such thin IC's legs tend to break off the PCB, because there is so little touching surface below. But they are so tiny, how can broken solder joints be found on such an array of tiny IC legs at all? Well, you could take a multimeter and try to test continuity for each pin, but this would be quite a tedious work. Instead, you can find the culprit using your ears. Yes, your ears. It is not a joke. You see, IC legs which lost their connection to their pads are more or less hanging in the air. One day, I realized that this has a slight similarity with an old music box, where metal pins are also fixed from one side and swinging from the other end. This brought me to the idea that I can use this effect to determine loose legs of such an IC. So, if you take a pair of tweezers and gently slide with no pressure over the pins like that, you will notice that all the soldered legs, which are fixed from both sides, sound a little bit dull. But the legs which lost the connection to the pads have slightly different, high-pitched sound. So even if it doesn't sound as beautiful as a music box, it is still clearly distinguishable. However, pay attention to be as careful as possible, since the IC legs are very fragile and can be bent easily, especially when not soldered at one end, so do your acoustic analysis as gently as you can. You will have to repeat it a couple of times to be able to hear out the right pin. It also can help to slide in both directions to improve the effect. Well, as soon as you found the loose IC legs, what's next? If you think that you will be able to solder one separate pin, just forget it. It is much too complicated, and if you try, you will probably shorten the legs round anyway. Instead, you actually don't necessarily need to know which pin exactly lost the connection. Maybe only for verification with a multimeter later, but the important thing is just to know which side of the IC has at least one loose leg, because it is easier just to resolder the whole side, and eventually, where one pin has lost its connection, probably the others don't hold that good anymore as well. Okay, first of all, and it is very important, you will need a lot of flux. It will help the solder to better flow in the direction of metal parts, avoiding bridges between the pins. When you will try to solder without using enough flux, you will have a hard time removing excessive solder between the legs. And since all that is so tiny, it is very easy to overlook shortened pins. And when all the pins are drawn into flux, just add a little bit of solder on the tip of your soldering iron and go slowly but with constant speed over the pins of the IC. If you leave enough time, you will see how the old solder melts and, thankfully to the flux, the new solder will stick and literally flow back towards the joints. You can repeat it two three times if you are not happy with the result, but important is to find a proper speed and to move into the same direction, because excessive solder will stick in the end of the pins row as a blob, probably shortening some of the last pins, but this blob can be easily removed using some solder wick. When needed, you can try to go over the pins for the last time, now without any additional solder on the iron tip. However, don't overstress it, since high temperatures can damage the pads on the PCB, and this would be a real problem. Repeat the whole procedure for all sides of the IC where you found loosened legs, or simply do it for the whole perimeter. The whole operation is also called solder reflowing, or just reflowing. After you've finished with it, don't forget to remove all the flux using some alcohol, since flux can be conductive and with such tiny spaces between the pins it will definitely produce a lot of problems. And as you can see, this graphics card is back to life, but if I wiggle the VGA connector, the colors flip and flicker. This is a common problem as well. Mostly it is sufficient to reflow the solder on the VGA connector as well. 
And as you can see, now everything works just fine. The card is working and the colors flickering vanished as well. I have to admit that the procedure of reflowing the solder on SMD ICs is not quite easy, but it is very useful skill since such issues happen quite often. It also helps a lot if you have to replace surface mounted ICs since the technique is very much the same. It gets by far more complicated when the IC spins are more dense. With cards like 3DFX Voodoo, it gets already very challenging but doable. And I got some of them back to life already a couple of times. I highly advanced to practice a little bit on some ICs which do not have such dense pins and then to increase the level of difficulty step by step. And this is it for today and hopefully you could take something with you. I wish you a lot of success and fun repairing your hardware. If you found this video helpful, please consider to support the channel and leave your comments and likes below. And so far, thank you and goodbye.